Hello, Gene Schwimmer here. Welcome to today's vlog. Before I get into our subject for today, well, I was talking the other day, just yesterday, about one of the advantages of having very few subscribers, which is a situation I hope will not last too long, but it gives me a chance to welcome new subscribers individually by name. I don't have to sit there and list 10 million subscribers which I would have to do when the day comes that I have 10 million subscribers. But for now, I don't have very many. So welcome Esteban Ravioli, new subscriber, subscribed either sometime yesterday or this morning. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. If you continue to like the videos, perhaps you could recommend my channel to other people. If you get in on the ground floor, do it very quickly, I can welcome them individually too. So there's your incentive. Go out there and, well, I'm just joking, uh, just fooling around with you. I really do appreciate your taking the trouble to subscribe and the appreciation that it shows from you that my videos have enough value that you want to see more of them. I, I really, really appreciate it. Today's subject, I actually had a little trouble trying to decide what angle to come at this from today's subject, which I'll get to in a second, because it's on the one hand a prime example of press bias, the way the press is treating what I think is a non-issue, and the fact that they're treating it at all because it is a non-issue. I guess I'll have to rack my brain later when I edit this video, come up with a title that will encompass both aspects of today's subject, which is an interview that George Stephanopoulos just did with President Trump. He asked one question out of this whole interview that the whole press has seized on, or at least the liberal press, they've just seized on this issue and they made something out of it that it is not. Very simply, George Stephanopoulos asked President Trump if the Russians came to you with dirt or what they claim to be dirt, derogatory information about an opponent, would he call the FBI and would he listen to the information? He said that he would listen to the information and he might call the FBI. And the press liberals are, well, Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer too, they both came out with statements that basically ranked what Trump said as a high crime and misdemeanor. They didn't come out and say that, but this was supposed to show his immorality and how bad a guy he is. If you want a really ridiculous headline, I'll put this up. This is going to show you just how crazy some of our friends on the left have gotten. It's, uh, well, here's the headline. Trump finally told the truth. He needs Russia to win. We just had the Mueller investigation for two years. He did not use information from the Russians. But you know who did? Hillary Clinton, the Clinton campaign. And this is what is so irritating about so many members of today's press. Now, you got to remember, well, what was Trump talking about or what was Stephanopoulos asking about? The situation he set up was a situation where the Russians came to him with information, not information that he solicited or paid for, uh, let alone disguise the payments and the solicitation. But what did Hillary Clinton do? This is where the hypocrisy meter in my head just went off like crazy when I read this story. Because as we all know, not only did she use, put out derogatory information about Donald Trump and just in case anybody forgot what it was, that information, and it was false. Fake news, this false story that Donald Trump was cavorting with prostitutes in a Moscow hotel room. Now, this is a story that Hillary Clinton hired Christopher Steele to dig up, to go get dirt. That was his job, go get dirt on Donald Trump. Obviously, he wasn't hired to go out and find complimentary information on Donald Trump. That's what he did. That's what she paid for. But how did she pay for it? That's another aspect of what Hillary Clinton did. She made the payment through a law firm, the Perkin Coy 
law firm. Why? To disguise the payment. So she knew that what she was doing was wrong when she did it. She was never called out on that, not by the liberal press, but now suddenly they're angry or they're all worked up about what Trump did, which was merely to use information. He didn't do it. It was just a hypothetical example. Of would he use the information? And he didn't even say he would use the information. He said he would listen to it, which is, well, it, it does raise this uh, question in my head. We all remember Watergate. I guess I'm so old that a lot of you watching this video don't even remember Watergate, or you, you've read about it, but you weren't alive at the time. But you had Woodward and Bernstein, two Washington Post reporters, pursuing this story about a cover-up of the burglary of the Watergate Hotel, where, where the Democratic Party had their campaign headquarters. The, they called them the plumbers, this gang of operatives that broke into the office. They almost got away with it. What happened was that somebody had put tape over the door after they broke in to hold the, keep the lock from closing again so that they could easily get out. And a security guard happened to walk by, saw the tape and caught them red-handed. And then there was a whole big cover up as the saying at the time was it wasn't the crime which was characterized as a two-bit burglary it was Nixon's cover up and the lengths that he went to to separate his campaign from what they did and to cover up the crime that's basically what it was now how did that connection between that burglary and the Nixon campaign get made it was through an informant who was unknown at the time, we now know it was an FBI or former FBI agent, Mark Felt. And by the way, he was not doing any kind of patriotic duty. He had wanted to be appointed head of the FBI and he got passed over and he was angry about that and he went to two reporters, Woodward and Bernstein, at the Washington Post and that's how it all came out. Now, I'm not going to rehearse the whole Watergate episode again. That's not really relevant, the details of Watergate. What is important, what matters is that the reporting that Woodward and Bernstein did was accurate. It was true. And the public, this is the important part, the public had a right to know. So now the question I would ask, suppose Mark Felt had not been an FBI agent, an American. Suppose he had been Russian. Suppose a Russian had approached Woodward and Bernstein with this identical information and they were able to verify the information, Woodward and Bernstein, and they found out that it was true. Should they have suppressed the story? Should they have not reported it? Did the public suddenly not have a right to know it because the source was a Russian? Of course not. Of course it should have been reported. And that's what is so irritating about this Stephanopoulos story that has gotten the liberal media and liberal politicians so worked up. Because that's the criterion. If a foreign national approaches, or if somebody in the mafia, it doesn't matter who it is, if somebody approaches Donald Trump with information, damaging information about the opposing candidate that is number one, true, number two, something that the public has a right to know and should know, not only has a right to know, but should know before making a decision on whom to vote for. And three, if it's something that the press would have reported if the information had come from an American, then Donald Trump or any candidate is perfectly correct to take that information and to put it out. But what's so ridiculous about this story is, well, go back to the prostitutes in the Moscow hotel room. I mean, don't go to Moscow and go to those prostitutes. I meant go to the story and remember that the press reported that story, which was false, without even bothering to check whether it was true. And of course, they've been speculating on the Mueller campaign. I guess you can't call it reporting. But then a lot of their actual 
ostensible reporting. I wouldn't call that reporting either. But they reported every little rumor as if it was fact. They speculated on it, held panels, and had all of these predictions of these terrible things that would happen to Donald Trump. And then the report turned out to be nothing. It's perfectly acceptable, it's perfectly right, it would be for Donald Trump or anybody to accept information as long as that information is true, the public has a need or a right to know it, and three, they would have reported it if the information had come from an American. If the information is accurate, who cares where it comes from? And the other point, just to reiterate the point that I just made about the uh, Moscow hotel room and the prostitutes and Donald Trump, that whole incident, which was not true, is that the liberal press, if anybody, I don't care who it is, comes to, well, the New York Times has no problem publishing leaks from the CIA, so I would say that's a lot worse than true, accurate information that the public has a right to know from somebody that happens to not be an American, which harkens back to and reinforces my point about press bias, liberal press bias, because apparently they rank Donald Trump's not actually doing it, but just his statement that he would be willing to, and not necessarily use information, but just listen to information from Russia or from some foreign national, foreign source, that is true, and the public has a right to know it, and the press would have reported it had that information come from Americans. They rank that, the seriousness of that, as far as how bad that is, above publishing leaked CIA information, which damages national security, which the public does not have a right to know, and which well, which the press would report, but should not report. As I said, the old hypocrisy meter in my head is going off big time. This is just ridiculous, and it's just a man. Oh, uh, let me throw in one more thing. As we saw with the supposed cavorting with prostitutes in a Moscow hotel room, if you come to the liberal press with damaging information or purported damaging information about any Republican, the press will run with it. The liberal press will run with it. They'll publish it and they'll publish it, never mind about whether it's true and the public has a right to know. They'll publish it without even checking. That's what happened with the Moscow hotel room. They didn't even check. If you're an honest member of the press, the alarm bells should go off on your head right away. I mean, the story is so ridiculous. Just as, as a matter of fact, the whole idea of Donald Trump colluding with the Russians to win the election and what it is that the Russians were supposed to have done. I haven't even heard that. And of course, whatever they were supposed to have done, they didn't do it. So as I said, hypocrisy, I'm starting to ramble. When I feel myself starting to ramble, that tells me end the video. I think I made my point. But if I didn't make my point, or if you disagree with my point, there's a comment section below the video. So put your comments in there. Agree with me or tell me I'm crazy and wrong. You won't hurt my feelings. Oh, and thumbs up if you like this video. And if you know somebody who would enjoy the video or benefit from it, then please, by all means, share it with them. Share a link to the whole channel. That would be nice. If you have a Twitter account, then tweet out the URL to this video or any other video or the whole darn channel. And I, oh, and if you have a suggestion for a topic you would like me to cover, you can put that in the comments too. Just because it says comments doesn't mean you can't put a suggestion in there. So you can put suggestions in the comment box. I'm not going to complain. And finally, subscribe. If you subscribe, then you'll know whenever I post a video as soon as I post it. But here's a little hint uh, in case you don't want to subscribe yet. And But if you don't, why not? But if you haven't gotten the inspiration to subscribe yet, I try to do these Monday through Friday, and then I take the weekend off. I think I missed one day out of all the time I've been doing this video. So I keep a pretty regular schedule. So have a nice day and come back soon. 
and I will see you soon, as soon as you come back. Bye.